Praise the Lord, I'm Reverend Michael Jakes. We can never overemphasize the necessity and importance of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost gives us power, but not just power. The Holy Ghost helps us to live our very lives. Many times the Holy Ghost is misunderstood. And so in this word you're about to hear, we want to discuss some of the forgotten qualities of the Holy Ghost. I pray you will be blessed now as you listen to the renovating Holy Ghost. This morning, I want to speak to you from my heart. Let me retrieve my word. Can't do anything about the word without the word. This morning, I want to talk to you about something that maybe you think you know something about. Maybe you think you know a little bit about. But I want to talk to you about something that we need and that we need greatly. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you, Lord, for being with us, Lord Jesus. And I pray that you might continue to be with us as we share this word. Lord, I pray you might open up hearts, convict hearts, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray you might draw people unto you even now, Lord Jesus. Have your way as your word goes forth. In Jesus' name, amen. I was, uh, as I was putting this together, the Lord was leading me and directing me. I uh, came across some things that I want to share. First, let me go to the book of Acts, the book of John, John chapter 16. John chapter 16, verse number 7. Let's all stand, please. John 16 and verse 7. John 16, 7 says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. You may be seated. I went on Google. And I just wanted to just gather a little bit of information. Just a little information about this topic and if you see my topic I'm going to be talking about the Holy Ghost I'm going to be talking about the Holy Ghost now as I was gathering information I just googled Holy Ghost and I came up with two things before I got to what I was looking for, I came up with two things first. First, what I didn't know is that there are two songs by two different artists. I don't know when they came out. I don't know. Don't ask me. One is by the name of somebody who calls himself Jeezy. Maybe y'all know who Jeezy is. And the other one is by Rick Ross. Now each one has a different song. And the name of the song is Holy Ghost. So I said, well, look at here. Two songs called Holy Ghost. Let me... Let me go on YouTube oh, no. and see what this is about. Yeah, I, I did that. I did that. Now, I was only able, I was only able to listen to just a few seconds of each. But I heard enough to know that both songs are near near blasphemy. It confirms one thing to me. 
that the mind and the heart of unsaved people have no regard for the things of God. No regard. Obviously no understanding, but no regard for the things of God and the Holy Ghost in particular. The Holy Ghost in both songs was disrespected. Both songs are filled with profanity and both songs try and put the Holy Ghost on display as being involved in the lifestyle that they are living. And so people when it comes to the Holy Ghost have no understanding at all of the Holy Ghost. Now you might say to yourself have you ever disrespected the Holy Ghost? Have I ever disrespected the Holy Ghost? Then you can ask another question. Have I ever blasphemed against the Holy Ghost? Ladies and gentlemen, if you if you are afraid that you have blasphemed against the Holy Ghost, you have not blasphemed against the Holy Ghost. If you have blasphemed against the Holy Ghost, you wouldn't know it, you wouldn't care, it would never enter your mind. You are far gone, far gone, far gone beyond anything that the Lord can do for you. The Bible says if you blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, there is no forgiveness for you in this world. Understand what that means. Understand what that means. The Bible says you can say all manner of evil. You can talk bad about Jesus. You can call Jesus all kinds of names. You can put his name in the mud. You can say whatever you want about Jesus Christ. And the Bible says you will be forgiven if you ask. But the Bible says if you blaspheme, if you speak evil about the Holy Ghost, it's a wrap. You're done. There's no forgiveness. And so if you think that you have done this, you have not done this. There is still hope for you. There was a time when I thought that I had blasphemed against the Holy Ghost, that I was doing things, and I thought there's no hope because I know what I'm doing. I know how I'm living. I know I'm wrong. And God is going to kill me, and, and I blasphemed against the Holy Ghost. I didn't. I didn't. But the devil will lie to you. You have to make sure that you put your life in line. You see, what you can do, you can disrespect the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that you can vex the Holy Ghost. Rebellion. The Bible says it in Psalm 63, uh, Isaiah 63 and verse 10. The Bible talks about the Bible talks about rebelling against God and vexing the Holy Spirit. And so when you rebel, when you understand rebellion, and rebellion is, don't tell me what to do. I don't care what you say. Leave me alone. That's rebellion. When you're in a state of rebellion in your life, that's vexing the Spirit of God. Vexing him. Making him upset. Making him upset. You see, the Holy Ghost is not only disrespected, the Holy Ghost is misunderstood. See, what we don't understand is the Holy Ghost is a person. I was actually online yesterday, and for the first time in my life, after all these years being saved, I actually saw something that I've never seen before. I read a pastor talking about the fact that the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost were two separate entities. Holy Spirit and Holy Ghost. So you have the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Ghost. And this was from a pastor. 
And I read it. And I was so amazed at what I was reading for the first time. I brought it to my wife. I said, somebody actually believes that the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost are two separate things. Ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost is one and the same. It's one and the same. Spirit, ghost. The word spirit means spirit, breath, ghost means same thing. It's two different words talking about the same exact thing. So don't get confused in the Bible when you see it. I had a young lady tell me years ago at my job, she told me this when I heard the first time, but I just thought she was mistaken. And that she wasn't a pastor or anything. She was a new Christian. And she said that her pastor had told her that the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit. And she showed me, see, spirit, ghost, it's two different. I explained it to her. She understood. But in all those years, I had never seen a pastor actually say it. Holy Ghost and Holy Spirit are the same. What we don't understand is the Holy Spirit is not a thing. Not a thing, not an it, not a force, not some impersonal force. When Star Wars was popular back in the 80s and it's popular now again, they were talking about the force be with you, let the force be with you. And they were trying to compare the Holy Spirit to the force in Star Wars. Uh-uh, uh-uh. The Holy Ghost is a person. It's a person. How is the Holy Ghost a person? Because the Holy Ghost has attributes, characteristics that only a person can have. I already said, the Bible says you can vex him. You can also grieve him. Make him sad, you can make him angry. The Bible says that you can quench him. That means that when the Lord wants to move by his power, the Bible says that you can cause the Spirit of God, cause the fire of the Spirit of God to go out because of your behavior. You can cause the Holy Spirit's fire to go out. You can resist the Holy Ghost through unbelief. When you don't believe, you are resisting the Holy Ghost. When you sense the Holy Ghost speaking to you, when you're sitting here, or whether you're in church, or whether you're being tempted to do something and you don't do it, or or you're tempted to do something and you do something wrong, that feeling that you sense in your heart, in your belly, in your chest, when you know that you should not, when you know you should not, that's the Holy Ghost. If you're saved, the Holy Ghost is trying to tell you, no, no. Raise your hand if you've ever been tempted here before. Tempted. Tempted hard. Tempted to do something that you know was jacked up. Tempted. You know you you know you shouldn't do that. You know you better not do that. You know you shouldn't do it. You've been told not to do it. You know you ought not do it. And you've been tempted. How many have walked away from temptation? You walked away. And you know you were tempted. You walked away. You didn't do it. And you sort of gave a sigh of relief like, all right, I'm not going to get myself into this no more. But how many times have you gone past the stop signs? How many times have you gone through the yield sign and, and, and gone ahead and done what you know you got no business doing? Or saying what you know you had no business in. How many of you have gone against the Spirit of God telling you, don't do that? You can lift up your hand and I'm going to lift up mine. Okay? So we, 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 we know. So we know that we are on the same, we are on the same level right here. But that sense that you get don't do it don't do it you hear the Holy Spirit speaks he speaks the Holy Ghost will always speak truth 
He is not going to tell you to put yourself in a simple situation. He is not going to tell you to go and hurt somebody. The Holy Ghost is not going to tell you to go and punch her out. Go and tell her off. Go give her a piece of your mind. The Holy Ghost is not going to tell you stuff like that. That's you. That, that's you. You want to do that. But the Holy Ghost is first gentle. And here's what the Holy Ghost also does. The Bible says that the Holy Ghost glorifies Jesus. Glorifies Jesus. Something else the Holy Ghost does. You ever been down and you wanted to pray and you couldn't pray? Couldn't pray. You know you, you want to. You position yourself to pray. You may be on your knees or you may be standing or you may be in a and, and, and you just want to pray and you just cannot do it. The words won't come. The Bible says that's where the Holy Ghost comes in. The Holy Ghost, the Bible says, intercedes on your behalf when you can't speak to God directly. When you don't know what to say or how to say it, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit intercedes, intercedes with groanings. Something that happens on the inside. It's something that builds up on the inside of you that comes out even when you don't know what to pray and how to pray. Because the Spirit of God knows what is on your heart. And so all of these things we need to understand about the Holy Spirit and make sure that we do not misunderstand Him. Do not misunderstand Him. And third thing, do not undervalue or underrate the Spirit of God. It is the Spirit of God that gives you power. It is the Spirit of God that gives you power to live. In Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8, it says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Power. Here's what we cannot make the statement make a mistake to do the Holy Ghost will use all of who we are to get through to us the Holy Ghost will use your emotions your emotions are a part of you he will use your emotions when the Lord moves upon someone's heart, the Lord does not move upon everyone's heart in the same way. Everyone does not respond the same way to the Spirit of God. Some will just cry. Some will just be still. Some will just be silent. Some will shout. Some will dance. Some will do other things. But the Spirit of God does not deal with every person in the same exact way every time now you will see me use myself as an example as always you don't usually see me as being very emotional not normally but that does not mean that the spirit of God does not connect with me that does not mean that I am not being blessed that I'm not being moved that I'm not being touched yes there are times when I have danced in the spirit for real. There are times when I have hit the floor like a sack of potatoes. Somebody put their hand on me, bam, right down. When the Holy Ghost moves, he will always be unique and he will not do it the same way every time. Will not move the same way every single time. And yes, Brother Michael has sweated and danced and, and spoken in tongues, but everybody know everybody here. <laughs> Y'all never seen that before, but yes, yes, yes. The Holy Ghost, when he works, he works uniquely. He works 
uniquely. It is the Holy Ghost that enables you to speak for him. Some of you have something inside of you. And I, I shouldn't say something. Some of you have a word inside of you. Some of you have been called aside, have been set apart to do a work for God. How you know? How, how, how you know, Brother Michael? Because I know. I've seen. God has a word in some of you that is germinating. It's working. And here's what God's going to do. God is going to use the experiences that you are having right now. And you are, a, you are going to be able to bless somebody through the stuff that you have gone through and are going through. You are going to be able to bless other people. To bless them. The Bible talks about being able to comfort people with the same comfort that you were comforted by when you were going through your stuff. Because you're going to understand. You know. You know. You've been there. You don't tell the person, oh, I've been there. I know that. But you understand because you've been through it yourself. So God, the Spirit of God wants to Renovate your life. Renovate your life. He wants to tear you down to build you up again. How does he renovate your life? He renovates your life. He begins to renovate your life through conviction. Conviction. The convicting power of the Holy Spirit. He gets in your life. The Holy Spirit intervenes in your life. The Holy Spirit interrupts your life. He interrupts your comfort, your thing, what you want to do. And he comes in and he says, I want you to do it my way. That is the most difficult thing to do for all of us. To let go of what we want to do to do what God wants us to do. And that's not easy. That's not easy. That is not easy at all. What it comes down to, even though we were singing it today, who exactly is sitting on the throne of your life? Who is it? Who's in charge of you? If you are in charge of you, we have a problem. Mm -hmm. Now I know you're running and you're going and you're working and you're going to school and you're doing what you got to do. I know, I know, I know. I know, but if you are in charge of you, it's not going to work out. You cannot be on the throne of your life. You can only see this far in front of you. Not even that far in front of you. God sees all the way down the road and around corners. You need to allow God to be the king of your life. Let God take over. And that's hard. That's hard saying here. Because I know you have plans. You got plans. You got school and you got majors in school. And, and you're going to be this and you're going to do that. And, and I know. And I know. Make sure that your plans fall in line with his plans. Amen. That's all I'm saying. Make sure that your plans fall in line with his. And not the other way around. Oh Lord, help me do this. Help me fulfill my dream. Help me get this done. I've always wanted to do this. Lord, help me do this. That's a little cricket. We should not be trying to fit God into our plans. I need to fit myself into God's plans for me. Make sure that you're on 
that road. Because the Holy Ghost has called you. The Holy Ghost has his hand upon you. Whether you know it or not, whether you understand it or not, the Holy Ghost has his hand upon your life. And we need to let God have his way. Because not only does he want to renovate, he wants to regenerate your life. Talk about renovation, breaking down and starting all over again and building up. Regenerate is talking about giving life. Talking about salvation. Salvation. Listen. When you open up your life to the Spirit of God, you are going to experience some things that you have never experienced before. When you open up your life to the Spirit of God, many of you right now, your life is closed to the Spirit. Many of you right now, you don't even realize it, but you're fighting against the Spirit. When you open up yourself to the Spirit of God and say, Lord, have your way. I surrender myself. Things are going to be different. Things are going to be different. But just to make that step, just to say those words are so difficult. And I think that we don't even understand those words when we say it. Lord, have your way. Understand what that means. Lord, have your way means I got to go sit down, take a seat, and let God work. Let God do what he wants to do. And I don't know what he wants to do. But Lord, take over. Take over. He has put a word in some of you. He has gifted many of you. And when you open up your life and let the Spirit of God get in your life, God is going to show you some things. Your life will begin to make a 180. Some things you will stop. Some things you will drop. Some things you will not do anymore. You just won't. That's what happens when the Spirit of God intervenes and interrupts your life. You want freedom? You want freedom? There's nothing worse. There's nothing worse than a Christian who is in bondage. A Christian that is in bondage. It almost sounds like something that shouldn't be. And, and, and it shouldn't be. But it happens. Christians in bondage. Christians who can't stop doing the wrong thing. Yes. Christians do the wrong thing. Christians do the wrong thing a lot. Christians get hooked on stuff. When you open up your life to the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God brings liberation, deliverance, freedom, when it was once bondage. That's what the Holy Ghost can do. That's what the power of God can do in a life that is given over to Him. You don't realize that if you're here this morning and you're saved that you have an anointing. We say, Lord, anoint me, anoint me, anoint me for this, anoint me for that. If you are saved, understand what that means. When you are saved, it means that the Holy Ghost has taken up residence in your life. The Holy Ghost. The same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead is in you. That power. 
I don't know about you. That's power. And when you have the Holy Ghost residing in you, you have the anointing. You are anointed. You are separated, set apart. And if you're saying, guess what? You are going to be different. We don't like being different. We want to sort of like go with the flow and sort of sort of be like everybody else. Not all the way, but you don't want to stand out. <coughs> Christians, real Christians, true Christians, stand out. They stand out because they're not like everybody else. I had this girl sitting in front of me in high school. Now, come on. It's corny. It's, it's, it sounds corny even when I say it. Every time I say it, it sounds so corny. But I tried to talk to this girl about Jesus. This is this is an Italian girl that sat in front of me. And I tried to talk to her about Jesus. It's, Best I knew how, 17 years old, didn't know much. But she took it, she wasn't rude. And she wrote in my yearbook. <laughs> y'all know, y'all know. She wrote in my yearbook, you know, something like, I thank God uh, uh, for you. And I could, I could, I could feel you. the presence of God flowing from you. Now, I don't know how much spirit of God she felt coming from this. <laughs> I, I don't know about all that. But the fact was that it was something about me that she understood. I was different. You got to understand, I got picked on big time. It wasn't like it is now. Now they got gangs and stuff in school. It wasn't, we didn't have any gangs. Back then when I was in high school, it was black and white. And I'm black. And I went to a school that was predominantly white, Italian. And I was the only black person in my class that year. Only black person. I was the only black spot in that class. <laughs> and everybody in the class did not want me there, especially the fellas. And so I'm sitting in the corner, and the teacher's there. And this is what I got for the whole year. This is what I got for the whole year. I hated going to the class to get my attendance taken. I hated going there. I was only there for 10 minutes every day, but I hated it. This is what I got every day. Spitballs. People balling up papers and just throwing it at me. See, they caught me after I got saved. <laughs> they caught me after I got saved and I was trying to do the right thing but if they would have caught me just a couple of years earlier yo it would have been I would have it, it would have been a wrap it would have been a wrap but I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to be a Christian I'm sitting there and I'm getting spitballs and I'm getting papers thrown at me and I'm going up and I'm being a I, I, I'm being sort of wimpy. I'm going. I'm telling the teacher, you know, they keep bothering me. And she says, "Just go sit down." So the, the class is almost over. There's nothing that she could do. There's nothing she could do. I hated going there. I hated going there. But this one girl there, she said she felt the love of God just flowing from me. It, I, that was that was not the love of God she said coming from me. <laughs> I wanted to fight them guys, but I knew that I could not do it. I I could not do it. When the Holy Ghost comes in you, he will change your outlook. He will change your outlook. Change you completely. That's what the Holy Ghost does when he begins to regenerate, when he regenerates and he renovates. And he restores. The Holy Ghost restores. Maybe you're here today and you are a Christian. And your life is not where it used to be. 
Your life is not where it once was. You don't feel that fire. You don't feel, you don't, you don't feel that surge in you that you used to feel. You don't, you don't, you don't sense it. The Holy Ghost restores. He, store, he restores. He's calling you back. He's calling you back. You have never gone too far. And I know you're thinking, I've done this and I've done that and I've been that and I haven't forgotten. I haven't remembered the Lord and I've, do, I've been doing this and you don't know, but you don't know, but you don't know. But you don't know Jesus. He forgives completely every single time. Yeah, brother Michael, but I, but you don't know. I, I, I be doing stuff on purpose, and I know better, and I shouldn't, and I know. Jesus forgives. You're saved. Jesus forgives. The devil will tell you. Mm -mm -mm. You think you're saved, right? You think you 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 only think you're a Christian. And you got everybody thinking you're a Christian too. That's what the devil says. There is therefore now no condemnation. Romans 8 1. Romans 8 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Who are in Christ Jesus. You don't need to be condemned. You just need to say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Me, but I said so many times, so many times. Do you know how many times that I said, Lord, forgive me when I was growing up, when I was a teenager? Do you know how many times that I said, I'm sorry, God? Oh my goodness, every day, every night, every. <clears throat> Monotonous. Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Lord, I won't do it no more. I promise you this time. This time, Lord, I'm serious. I'm not going to do it again. For real. For real, Lord. I mean it. I mean it. Sometimes there was tears. Sometimes I was shaking. Lord, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. When I was praying, I was thinking I was meaning it. I did mean it. But how come I did it again? What was up with that? I did it again. After I did all that crying and sobbing and snorting. All of that. And I still sin. Still, it's enough to make somebody want to say, forget it. This is impossible. It's never impossible. The grace that God has extended to you is something that you do not comprehend. Jesus has invested his life in yours. He has put his spirit in you. In you. Now I know that some will say that the Holy Spirit, though, if you keep on acting up there, the Holy Spirit, it'll snap the Holy Spirit back. Sorry, you can't have my spirit because you're too evil, you're too bad, and you're too wrong, and I'm taking my spirit back, and now you're not saved no more. Listen, people don't go around getting saved back and forth over again. I was, oh yeah, I was saved five years ago. And then I came back to the Lord. And then I started sinning again, and then... And then I had to get saved again. And then I started sinning again. And then I had to ask God to come into my heart. And I got saved again. People don't get saved two and three and four times in their life. You get saved one time. You can say once. Once. Problem is that some folks, that some folks got a little mixed up at the beginning. Some folks thought they were saved from the beginning 
And they wasn't. And when their life start messing up, they think that, Jesus, what happened? Sometimes people are not saved when they think they are. But Jesus, when he comes into your life and change your heart, you know it. You know it. When I got saved, I knew that I was saved. I knew it. I didn't know that. I didn't, I didn't know a whole lot. I knew I was saved. Whatever the preacher said saved was, I knew that I had that. I knew it. Have you ever went outside? Have you ever gone outside and start singing Christian songs out in the middle of the street at night on the corner? All the time. Oh, so y'all done that. See, see? So y'all say, y'all say. <laughs> oh, yeah, the night I got saved, I just went out on the corner and just broke out in song. Now, that, now four hours before that, I wasn't a Christian. You wouldn't have caught me saying nothing about Jesus outside on the corner. But something happened when I got saved. Something happened. I just started singing out in the street. And me, the shyest person that God has ever created, I couldn't talk to anybody. I couldn't talk to anybody. And the man said, if God has saved you tonight, stay. It would take a team of horses to get me to stand up in front of a group of people to say one word. But when he said, if God has saved you tonight, whatever saved was, I knew something happened. And he said, stand up. And so I stood up. And I began to thank God for saving me. Lord, I thank you for saving me and I couldn't get the rest out. The tears just came back running and I just couldn't stop. I couldn't, I could not stop crying. I couldn't stop. It. I couldn't stop crying. But that was because the Spirit of God had come into my heart, melted my heart, and the type of person that I was before, a person that you would not want to know, a person that was on his way to being a thug, a person that was on his way, <laughs> I was on my way. I was on my way to being a really, really, really bad guy. I never got to, I never got to that level, but I was there. All my friends that I was with, they all gone now. Because they got shot, killed, or they still in jail right now. One of my friends killed somebody. Murder. That was my crowd that I was with. That's who I was with. And I was head down, I was, I was almost there. Who walks down the street? Who walks down the street? Takes a stick. And breaks a car window. For no reason. I don't want to act if we've ever done something like that before. <laughs> Just take a stick. Nice little orange car that used to always be parked on my block. Nice little sports car. Come with a stick and just go. What? Why? Why? What possessed you to do something like that? That's where I was headed. That's where I was on my way to. And if you don't begin to make right choices in your life, right choices in your life, and people are much more crazy than they was when I was growing up, that's low-key stuff. Now, people carry guns. People getting shot. Nobody was getting shot in my day. You had a beef? Drop your gear? Let's do it. 
This was our guns right here. This was our guns. This was our guns. This is what we did. We fought. We fought. Y'all laugh, but that's what that's how we settled it. That's how we settled it. After school, three o'clock. <laughs> True, that's how it really was. Three o'clock? When three o'clock come? Meet you outside. It's big guy. It's big guy. Big guy. Fifth grade said. Outside. A little skinny guy. A little skinny guy. He said, outside. I'm like. <laughs> what I did. He just wanted to fight. He just wanted to beat me up. So we get out there. And all the kids in the circle. My friends. My buddies. My people that stick up for me. I'm in a circle. And we're fighting. And I, I you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like. I don't know what to do. Big, big guy. I don't know what happened, but we grabbed one another and we were rolling around on the ground and we were rolling. Somehow, <laughs> somehow, I got on top of him. <laughs> I don't know how, but we rolled and rolled and I was like this. And his face was right there. <laughs> and they pulled me off they pulled me off kicking and screaming get off of me get off and I'm kicking I wanted to keep on fighting and and I get home his face is all red you know all red and, and I get home my sister meets me at the door and says what happened to you what happened because I'm all messed up I said, I had a fight. She said, did you win? I said, yeah. She said, good. <laughs> but it's not like that anymore. Now everybody want to settle everything with a gun. With a gun. Listen. When the Holy Ghost enters into your space your life and some of you know what I'm talking about some of you have experienced the change that the Holy Ghost will bring to your life and you don't understand it it's not for you to understand it it's for you to move when he speaks, to speak what he tells you, even though you don't understand it, is for you to make yourself available when he says to go, is for you to be obedient. That's what the Spirit of God will do. That's what he will do, and that's what he wants to begin to do in your life. I want you to think about the Holy Ghost. I want you to think about how much the Holy Ghost has protected you up until this time. Sometimes the Holy Ghost is not always going to speak loudly. Sometimes you have to be listening for his voice. You have to be listening for his voice. We have so much going on around us many times that we cannot hear his voice in our lives, in our world. With the people surrounding us, we cannot hear his voice. But if you set yourself aside and say, Lord, speak to me, he 
will speak to you. He will speak to you. Finally, as I close, the Holy Ghost convicts. He convicts. He shows you what's right. He shows you what's wrong. As we said earlier, that little niche that you feel in your heart, in your belly, that's the Holy Spirit speaking to you, telling you no. And we've all been there. We've all been there. And we've all gone through the red light. We've all done things that we should not do. And if we're a Christian and you heard his voice telling you not to do something, you knew that you were wrong. But the Holy Ghost... The Holy Ghost, yet and still, reaches out and he says, come, come. Let the power of the Holy Ghost revive you. Let the power of the Holy Ghost regenerate you. Let the power of the Holy Ghost restore you. Reinstate you. Let the power of the Holy Ghost bring you back to the place where you need to be. If you're here today and you're not saved, you're not born again, you don't have the Spirit of God in your life, the Holy Spirit is calling you right now. He's calling you right now. If you don't know Jesus, if you're just here, if you're just a body in the sea, if you don't have His Spirit in you, He's calling you right now. He's calling. Because he knows what he wants from your life. And he's trying to deposit. He's trying to deposit something in your life. He's trying to deposit himself into your life. Let him do his work. Let him do his work today. He's here today, right now. He's here to work in your life, in your heart. Bow your heads, please. Bow your heads. We have prayed, we have asked for the Holy Ghost. We've asked for the Holy Ghost to make himself known in this place today. And I know he's here. I know the Spirit of God is here. And I know the power of God wants to manifest himself right now. In your life. With all your doubts and fears. And everything that's going on in your mind. In your heart. In your life. The Holy Ghost wants to manifest himself to you right now. Right now. This I know. This I know. If you would open up your heart. Surrender. Say, Lord, you take over my life. You sit on the throne of my life. Yes, yeah, singers and musicians, you can come. The Lord has something for you today. You're here today. And you don't even understand it all. You don't even understand everything that I've spoken today. But you know you need the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. You know you need him to regenerate you. You know you need him to restore you. You're not where you used to be. You know you need him to renovate your life. Build you back up. And you know you need him to revive you. You're here. Maybe you've fallen from a place where you were. Maybe things don't seem the same. You're here. I want you to step up if you're here today. 
The Holy Ghost is speaking to you right now. The Holy Ghost is speaking to you right now. I'm going to wait on you right now. Because I know you're here. Don't wait for anybody else. As they say, anoint it. Enter into his presence this morning. Begin to pray. When you get here, open your mouth and begin to pray. Begin to pray. Lord, I need your spirit. Lord, I need your power. way in my heart and in my life, Lord Jesus. Spirit of God, move upon me right now. Spirit of God, I surrender to you right now. Hallelujah. I surrender to you right now. Hallelujah. 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 fighting against the Spirit of God. You're still fighting against the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is tugging at your heart. He's tugging at your heart. And you sense His presence. You sense His presence right now. And you're still fighting against the Spirit. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. He's here to bless you today. Hallelujah. 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 Lift up your hands, begin to worship God. Lift up your hands, begin to worship God. Lift up your hands, begin to worship God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Hallelujah. let you go this morning. He will not let you go. If you have entrusted your life to him, he will not let you go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, let your Holy Spirit rule and reign in this place right now, Lord Jesus. Lord, let your spirit, Lord Jesus, come upon those who have come up, Lord Jesus. Lord, let your Holy Spirit cover each and every one, Lord Jesus. Lord, touch, revive, regenerate, Lord Jesus. Restore, Lord Jesus. Lord, let your spirit have its way even now, Lord Jesus, as they open up their hearts. As they give themselves to you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 The Spirit of God is calling you this morning. The Spirit of God is calling you this morning. Hallelujah. 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 
Praise the Lord. Thanks for joining us on the podcast today. But before you go, I just want to invite you to join us on our blog at that's the word.org. And also we have a blog dedicated to our Bible study. It's at cuttingitright.com. Also, check out our YouTube channel. You can just type in Reverend Michael Jakes or type in Upper Room Outreach Ministries and it'll bring you right there. So until next time, God bless you. <laughs>